good morning welcome to the fifth youtube channel of the fifth today we will be having our first class on the clinical nutrition um, uh, main topic that is we are diagram for the subject of clinical nutrition so i am going to share with you how to get for this particular youtube live and uh, let's start with our Is my voice a bit clear now? Hello, very good morning. So we'll be starting our session. Okay, so good morning everyone. I hope I am a bit clear now, audible. Fine. So thank you for joining in. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you for joining in. Today we'll be discussing about entity relationship diagram. So this is the first lecture of our gate crash course for the subject of database management system. So I hope that in the previous lectures you were already started enjoying the great crash course and uh, it's like a course in which every subject is divided into five parts and for every subject there will be uh, like 10 hour live class okay so pre uh, people who are in the like uh, in, in the revision stage for the gate preparation for gate 2023 they can have a quick look and revisit their subject syllabus by uh, by looking into the videos and the topics of this gate crash course where we will be discussing about the most important topics and people who are just begin are beginning with their preparation or at the very early stage of their preparation they can also start uh, with these videos and they can have a uh, quite a bit understanding about what should they go for what should they learn and what are the most important topics that will be asked in the gate 2023 as well as 2024. Okay. So let's start with our today's session. I hope that you will enjoy it. So first let's start with 
a very basic introduction with data and database. So first of all, what is data? Data can be anything. Data can be anything. Today's world, data can be text, data can be videos, data can be images, data can be number, data can be table, anything. Okay, anything that tells us about about uh, I mean some entities. Everything that tells us about something that is in real world that is called data. What is database? Database is a collection of data. If you have multiple texts, if you have multiple videos, if you have multiple images, if you collect them all, okay, and the overall structure that will be called database. Okay. And we have two kinds of database. One is the traditional database, another one is the multimedia database. So traditional database is the database that contains only text and numbers, whereas multimedia database are the database who collects videos, images. As well as other things. Okay. So these are the two broad, I mean, two broad uh, kind of databases. Now, let's move ahead. So, what is data warehouse? When you have the data that is very big, okay, suppose like a, a hundred years of data of a specific organization, when the data size is very big and it is a historical data. That is called the data warehouse. Okay, so data warehouse mainly maintains the previous or historical data. Right. Now let's move into what is database management system. So in the previous slide we looked into what is data, what is database, and all. Now let's move into what is database management system. Database management system is basically a software. Okay, it is a software which is actually a set of programs to define constant and manipulate the database okay so it is a software which is used to you know what are, what are the rules and regul i mean what are the things that it can do it can define it can define then it can you know uh, it can define it can construct it can manipulate the data okay so it is a software in the broad way okay. there are three different models to represent a database okay so what is the three different models you can directly see that is high level representation level and low low level so what is high level or conceptual model so this is this is a model that to explain people that to explain the general people who doesn't have any idea about the databases we will use the high level, high level or conceptual database. Okay, so it is basically high level or conceptual. Okay, so in high level or conceptual database, we really won't go into very deep into all of the details of uh, a database, right? So, like uh, for understanding of a general person who is not really very into this uh, technical terms, so to explain them. We use this high level of conceptual uh, type of a model. Okay, so one of the most uh, well known or important model is that entity relationship model or ER model that we will be discussing about for today. Okay, in today's class, we will be discussing about this high level or conceptual level model that is ER diagram or if you see ER, right? And it is uh, kind of one of the most popular ER diagram. Whereas in the representation level, or you can say that it is like implemented level. Okay, so it is like implementation level. Okay, so in implementation level, we have a relational model. Relational model. Okay, so in uh, what is the basic difference between ER model and relational model? So ER model is kind of you can say. It is kind of a diagram. Okay, it is kind of a diagram, which, in very broad level, it will show that what are the different entities, what are the relationship between them, and it will di diagrammatically, it will try to establish all of this relationship, right? Like this. That is in the implementation level or relational model. We'll be looking into certain tables. Okay, we'll be having columns. We'll be having rows. So that is kind of different tables will be there. Okay, 
and finally we have our lower level or you can say physical level so what is physical level physical level is the level in which the database is actually being stored into our memory okay in our main memory or into our secondary memory how the database is being actually stored okay we know that everything in memory is stored in the terms of bit okay so uh, i mean there are different models by which one database can be stored into memory so that is that comes to the physical level okay lower level or physical level. so you can see these are the broadly these are the three different uh, ways okay or you can say these are the three different abstractions in which we use to represent our database management system okay like uh, if we are uh, thinking about er model so we really won't go very deep into the details whatever we will be stating into the relational model right okay. again whenever we will be when, whenever we will be talking about the relational model or the tables that we are using we will we'll really abstract the things how the database is actually stored into the physical level right so every every uh, uh, level like i level it is basically abstracting the representation and lower level the representation level it is actually abstracting the lower level and lower level is what in which the database is actually stored okay these are the basic terms or basic models before jumping into the actual content okay so now it is the time to jump into the actual content so let's start with entity relationship model okay so meanwhile if the if you have any question any any doubt anything just post it just uh, I mean, put it into the chat box. Okay, you have the live chat YouTube. So just put it there, and I'll be happy to uh, give you the. I mean, solve your doubt. Okay. So in entity relationship model, you can see the very broad two terms. What is one is entity, another one is the relationship. Okay. What is entity? So entity is a thing in the real world. Okay. So entity is a thing in a real world. I am an entity. You are an entity. That card is an entity. Okay, so anything that is actually, I mean, living into the world, real world, that is called entity. So I can say a thing in real world. In an example, we can give a person, okay, a specific person that can be entity. Then, if we have an entity, then we'll be having attributes. What is the attribute? Attribute is uh, are the properties of that entity? Okay. So it is kind of properties of the entity. Okay. So, what are the properties that can be associated with this person? A person can have name, right? A person can have age, a person can have some sort of ID, he can have phone. So these are all the attributes that are, you know, uh, that are like related to a specific entity named person. Okay. Then comes the representation. Uh, I mean, relation. The relation is the association of entities. Okay. I mean, we will associate two different entities via relationship. Okay. I mean, how does it look like in real world? Suppose a person is working into uh, an organization. Okay. So then there will be one relationship for works for. Okay. So it's like association of entity. So kind of the example can be works for. Okay. So we have like person, we have you know organization. And the connection by which these two entities are, you know, related, that is works for. Okay. So this is the broad structure. I will be coming into the very deep details about this entity relationship model in the subsequent slides. Okay. So, is there any question, any anything that you wanna bring up till this part? I'll wait for a couple of seconds, then I'll move forward with the details of entity relationship model. Okay. 
okay looks good let's look forward so in entity relationship model let's talk about firstly let's talk about the attributes okay so we have different kind of attributes right we have different kind of attributes what is that first of all is the simple attribute so simple attribute is the attribute that cannot be cannot be divided again okay simple attributes are the attributes that cannot be divided again suppose a person a person is having suppose a you know unique id okay so we hope that this unique id cannot be divided again okay so to understand this concept very deeply let's understand that what is composite attributes so composite attribute are, attributes are the attributes that can be divided again okay so these are the attributes that you know can be divided again so what does it mean by divided again so it is like suppose name okay now if we are talking about a name of a per person then there can be multiple things one is the first name okay first name of the person we we need to find the last name of the first person in some cases we had we used to have middle name of the person so you can see the person is not a i mean name is not a single attribute right it can be divided into multiple attributes in the same way suppose you are talking about an address okay address of a person so address can also be divided into multiple multiple attributes right so what are the attributes the attributes can be you know street number street number it can be road name it can be flat number and so on okay like pin code uh, you know state district in many parts we can divide addresses okay so these are the attributes those are you know composite attribute okay so the broad difference between single simple attribute and composite attribute is if you have a collection of simple attribute and together them if if they are like uh, you know related simple attribute then taking together of all the simple attributes will be a composite attribute okay that's the kind of one difference that you can see now let's move forward with uh, what is single valued attributes and what is multi valued attributes okay so single valued attribute is the attribute which can have which will be unique basically okay which cannot take multiple values for a specific entity. what does it mean it means that suppose we have suppose we have age okay suppose we have age of a person right so if we have age of a person that is you know single valued attribute why because age is unique for every person age is unique at a certain point of time okay but if we are having the phone number okay if we are having the phone number or maybe address then it can be multi valued why because a person can have multiple phone numbers a person can have multiple addresses or multiple house okay so in that sense so in that sense this uh, age is a single valued attribute okay so for a specific person at a specific point of time the age will be unique right but for a specific person at a, in a specific point of time this phone number and the address these two may or may not be unique okay so that is why these are called the multi valued attributes okay so great let's move forward with another three type of attributes the one is the stored attribute derived attribute and complex attribute okay what is stored attribute stored attribute is the attribute is the attribute that is actually stored into actually stored into database okay so we have our database right and we are really not storing the specific attribute of a person okay but we are storing some other attribute from where we can derive from where we can derive the current attribute that we are looking for and uh, you know uh, for our specific case okay let me give some example then it will be very clear okay so the stored attribute can be date of birth okay the stored attribute can be date of birth for a person and what will be the derived attribute in this case the derived attribute can be age. 
okay so if we are storing the date of birth of a person in our database then every time in every point of time we can just derive the age okay subtracting uh, this date of birth from the current date that we are looking for right so and uh, like if if we are going to store the age attribute in our database so in every point of time in every day basically we need to update this attribute right because this age cannot be you know constant for a long time right so i mean this date of birth is the attribute which is actually stored into our database and age is one attribute that can be derived okay there are a couple of other examples that we can say suppose we have a basic salary of an employee Okay, that is stored into our database and now we can derive the attributes like what is this intent pay what is the tax what what are the different pf and all okay we, we can just derive it uh, depending on the multiple percentages multiple calculations okay but the stored attributes it's, is what that is the basic salary okay this is the main difference so derived attribute i can say that the attributes attributes which can be derived from from the stored attributes okay I hope that uh, this discussion is clear Right. If, if you have any point of time, if you have any questions, just put it into the live chat, okay, so that the session can be more interactive. Okay. Let's talk about the complex attribute. So what is complex attribute? So complex attribute are the certain attributes which can be multivalued as well as which can be composite. Okay. So complex attribute are composite as well as you know multi value composite as well as multi value so what does it mean by composite attribute so what does it mean by composite attribute composite attribute we know that the attribute can be broken into multiple pieces right suppose for this uh, address we have I told that we have kind of flat, flat number, then we can have street number, we can have, you know, uh, country. So, our address can be broken into these multiple parts. Okay, whereas for multi value attribute, we can have multiple addresses. Okay, suppose we can have address one of a person, we can have address two, two of a person, and so on. Okay, so if an attribute okay if an attribute are having both of these composite as well as multi value scenario then that attrib uh, attribute can be called as complex attribute okay so we have a very uh, front end uh, you know example that is what that is address right uh, address can be both composite and multi value as as so like generally we are seeing here right address can be composite the phone number number uh, example you can also take it as complex because in phone number you know we typically have the country code that is a prefix of the phone number right for india it's like plus nine one so in in that sense it is a composite attribute we we have the you know actual phone number then we have the country codes to uh, i mean prepended with the phone number and the phone number can be multivalued also right so in that sense that phone number of a uh, specific person that can be that can also be the complex attribute okay so let's move forward so let's uh, give some example okay about what is a relationship okay, the most important part so we have discussed about the entity we have discussed about the different attributes that can be associated with an entity okay so now it's time to discuss about you know uh, relationship okay what is relationship suppose we have two entities okay one is employee 
another one is depart. Okay, we have employee entity, we have department entity. Now we have couple of employees E1, E2, we have E3, we have E4, kind of that. And suppose we have some certain departments D1, D2, D3, maybe D4. Okay, now uh, assume that here is the works for relationship. Okay. As I already mentioned that a relationship is something that uh, associates, uh, you know, two or multiple, uh, I mean, entity, right? If, if it is uh, like associating two entities, then that will be called the binary relationship. It, if it is associating three entities, then that will be called the ternary relationship and so on. Okay. So here, suppose this E1, E1 is basically working for D1. Okay. E1 is working for T1. Suppose again you have E2, employee E2 that is also working for T1. Okay. Now suppose you have E3, E3 is working for D2. Okay. Then suppose you have E4, so E4 is also working for you know D3. Okay. So these are the relationship that can be possible. Okay, this is one of the possible relationship that we can think of. So in this relationship, what are the you know key features that we can see by this diagram? Okay, what are the key features? The key features is every employee. Okay, if, if you look carefully, every employee is working for exactly one department. Okay, there is no case that one employee is working for multiple departments, right? So every employee, like E1 is working for D1, then E2 is working for again D1. Then E3 is working for, you know, uh, D3, I'm sorry, D2, and E4 is working for D3, right? So, you can see every employee works for exactly one department, but a department, okay, a department like D1, D2, D3, D4 can have many employees, okay? A department can have many employees because, I mean, directly we can see that department D1 is having actually two employees right whereas this department d4 is having none of the employees okay so department can have many employees as well as the new department it can have to have an employee right so department d4 is not having it kind of that right so this is the like basic example for a entity relationship model let me check the other terminologies yeah so we'll be taking this example we'll be discussing about this example in terms of other other measurements okay other measurements that we'll be using for a entry relationship model so the what are the other measurements that is you can say the degree degree of the you know uh, ear diagram you know then cardinality ratio okay. so what are those things let's jump into it what are what is degree and what is cardinality ratio so degree is what degree is the number of entities participating in a single relationship Okay, number of entities that is participating in a single re uh, relationship. So what does it mean? So here, uh, if you if you just uh, jump into the example works for. So so in works for you can see that we have two two entities. Okay, we have two entities. Uh, one is employee, another one is the department. So this works for is works for is the relationship which is you know like joining or associating these two. Uh, different entities okay so th that is why the degree of work spot okay the degree of work spot is what the degree of work spot is two so if you say degree of work spot is two because it is you know number of entities participating in a single relationship there are two entities we can see those are participating right and uh, this is also called the binary relationship as there are two entities, right? If there can be three entities, then we can say that that is binary relationship, as I already previously mentioned. Now, let's see what is the next terminology that is cardinality ratio. Okay, so in cardinality ratio, we can see that it is telling maximum number of relationships in which one entity can participate. So, we have employees, right? And we can see that one employee can participate into only one relationship, right? Because every employee will work in exactly one department. 
so there is no case that one employee is going for multiple departments and one employee is taking part into multiple uh, relationships right so there is no point of uh, having this scenario i mean given our previous example and previous constraints okay so the cardinality ratio for an employee so the cardinality ratio for an employee will be what will be one only right because every employee is participating in one relationship If participating in one relationship, okay. Then here comes the department. Okay, after employee, we'll have we have are having department. So department, what can be the number of employees? I mean. You know, number of uh, relationships in which one one uh, entity can take part. So, for department, we can see that for a specific department, there can be multiple employees are working into the department, right? So, it can be what? It can be n, right? Suppose we can think that uh, all the employees. Okay, we have n number of employees, and all the employees are working into a same department. Okay, so at max, it can be n, right? We, I mean, if we don't have any particular number, then we can just place n. Okay, so you know, uh, we can say that every department is participating in in relation ships. Okay. That is. Uh, you know, department. Ratio for department. Now again, we have participation or existence. So participation or existence means minimum number of relationship. Okay, whereas for cardinality, we told that that is the maximum number of relationship in which one entity can take part. So for the minimum number of relationship, for the employee, for the employee, it was typically told that an employee will work for, you know, exactly one department. Okay, so minimum number of relationship for which an employee can take part that is obviously one, right? Because the every employee should be associated to only one department. Okay, I mean one and exactly one department. So the I mean minimum number of relationship will be one. Whereas for department, whereas for department we have seen the department like department four, if you remember. We remember we have the department like department 4 where we have directly seen that the department 4 is actually not taking part into uh, any of the relationships right so it will be zero so the minimum number of relationship in which the department uh, entity can take part that is zero like so this is called the participation or existence so i think that the uh, difference between the cardinality ratio and uh, participation or existence is broadly clear right so let's move forward let's talk with uh, some more terminologies okay so we have something called total participation so total participation is what if all the entities are participating in the relationship okay so we had in our previous example we had this employee so typically the entities are represented as this rectangle boxes okay the relationship is represented using the rhombus and we have another you know entity that is department okay so we have this relationship that is works for works for okay. now the thing is that total participation is a you know scenario in which we can say that uh, one entity is like fully participating okay it means that all the all the and all the entities okay well, i mean whatever the existing members are there in the entity everyone is participating in the relationship okay so this total participation is represented using this double dash lines okay so it means for, for our last example this employee is actually participating totally okay so we can just connection it like this okay double dash so double dash means 
this employee relationship or you can say employee entity that is participating totally okay. and again we have the single participation so single participation means the maybe some of the entities don't take part into the relationship okay so that is true for you know department department some of the entities are not taking part so we have the example of d4 which is not taking part into the relationship right so for for that single participation we typically used to represent it using a single dash line okay and for the cardinality ratio we can also mention cardinality ratio here so the employee can take part okay i mean so the n number of employees can take part into one department it's written like that okay so it's like in two one i mean many to one relationship model where in a certain department we can have multiple employees okay so this is the you know uh, uh, this is the cardinality ratio that we can say okay and uh, again we have uh, you know min max relationship so min max relationship is nothing we will just write the cardinality ratio as well as existence one after another so the thing is that let me just take the you know, employee I mean, we won't use the number. We'll have we are having employee as well as we are having department. Okay, so the minimum number of participation that can one employee can take. Okay, that is one. Okay, because it, it was told that every employee is working, I mean, in only one department and exactly in one department. Okay, so the minimum number of relationships that can the employee entity take part, that is one. Okay, and the what is the maximum? The maximum is also one. Okay, because in our given statement, it was like stated like that. Okay, minimum and maximum. Whereas for the department, we have seen that there are certain departments who are, who are not having I mean, not taking part into any of the relationships, right? So, so that means the minimum number of relationship that the department can take part that is zero. Okay, whereas the maximum is n, because we have also seen that there are such departments in which more than one employee is working. Okay, so that is zero comma n. So it is like min comma max. Min will be coming to the left hand side, max will be coming to the right hand side. So. Let me just leave this two as I discussed. So all the entities are participating. Participating on here. Maybe some of the Are not taking part. Okay, that is a single part. Now let's move ahead. So with the relationship example. Okay, so with the relationship example, uh, suppose we have this case that every department should have a manager, and only one employee manages the department, and an employee can manage only one department. Okay. So we have scenario like employee. We have scenario like employee, and uh, here we can see like uh, only one employee manages the department, and employees can manage only one department. Okay. So we have employee entity, we have you know department entity. Okay, and we have kind of managers. manage scheme so we can see that we are having employee we are having department we are having managers okay so it is telling that every department should have a manager and only one employee manages the department okay so there can be you know employee manages a department okay and uh, 
it is also telling that every department should have only one employee as a manager and every employee can manage only one department okay so there is no point of having many employees managing one department or one department is being managed by many employees okay i mean i mean uh, one employee managing multiple department and one department is managed by multiple employees okay these two scenarios don't come because in the problem statement itself they have mentioned that every department should have a manager and only one employee manages the department okay i mean for department also it is taking part into only one relationship and for the employee also it is taking part into only one relationship right but the scenario is that we have suppose we have this uh, four departments okay we have so this employee one which is managing the department one then employee two which is managing the department two then employee three who is managing the department three okay and suppose yeah we have these three departments now it is not told that there cannot be employees which are not which are i mean every employee should manage the department it is not told right so there can be other employees which are just the employees okay, not the managers okay so we can have e4 e5 these are the employees that are not managing any department right so if this is the scenario then what are the different uh, i i hope that scenario is clear right are there any question regarding the scenario i'll wait for a couple of minutes then i'll move ahead with uh, uh with the solution with the solution or you know different measuring points for uh stating this er er model okay we'll move forward just let me know if there are any question i'll wait for a couple of time then i'll go So I got a question that is, uh, who is managing department? So a department is managed by employee. Okay, a department is managed by employee and only one employee. But that doesn't mean that all the employees are manager. Okay, there can be certain employees who, who are not manager, but every department should be associated with at least, I mean, only exactly one employee who is managing the department okay so here we can see that for department d1 d2 and d3 the employees are assigned e1 e2 e3 respectively so e1 is managing department d1 e2 is managing department d2 and e3 is managing department d3 whereas this e4 and e5 are not managing any departments okay so that is to understanding is it is it clear Are there any any further questions? So great. If there are no more questions, I'll move forward. So let's see what we have. Okay. So this is the case. Okay. So let's let's try to draw the ear diagram. So the so the year diagram will be kind of I'm I'm just uh, drawing it here. So we have these two entities, employee, and we have the relationship that is you know manages manages. We can have another like department. Okay. Now the thing is that who is totally participating, who is not at all participating. I mean, so the totally participating, we can say here in this case, that is the department. Okay. So every department should be managed by one employee. Okay. Every department should be managed by a manager or that is in other words, that is the employee. So department is totally participating. Okay. And in the previous slide, I told that this total participation is actually represented using this double dash, right? Total participation is double dash. But as employee, we have we are seeing that there are certain employees who are not actually uh, taking part into the relationship. So the employee will be single participation, right? It won't be like a total participation. So to, single participation is represented by 
a single dashed line. Now, if you are telling that what will be the min max case, so the in the, the minimum number of relationship that an employee can take part that is zero. Okay, that we can see for uh, E four and E five, and the maximum number of relationship that the employee is taking part for this specific case that is one. Right, an employee can if if they are taking part. Okay, if they are taking part, then they can take part up to one department. Okay, they can manage at I mean at most one department. Okay, so if you are if you wanna like take the min max diagram, then that would be zero one. The same for the department, it will be like one one. Okay, why one one? Because for every department, there should be assigned a manager. Okay, so the minimum number of uh, you know relationship that uh, a department can take part that is one, and the maximum is also one. Right, minimum is one, and the maximum is also one. So that is kind of a you know, uh, diagram that uh, uh, I mean, ER diagram that we can talk about. Now, fine. Let's move into the next uh, example. The next example is telling that every employee works for at least one project, and every project should be associated with at least one employee. That means from both the sides. Just just read the question once, and I'll. I'm just uh, in the broader diagram. Okay. And suppose we have the relationship as works for. Okay. So, what is it telling that every employee is working for at least one project? Okay. And every project should be worked by at least one employee. That means what? Suppose we have certain, let's, let's take certain example. Okay. We have like uh, projects, we have uh, employees. Okay. So we have employee one, e two, e three, e four. We have projects suppose p one, p two, p three, p four, and let's say p five. Okay. Now this employee e one should work for at least one project. What does it mean by at least? At least means it the, it should work in at least one project. Okay. The minimum number of projects that is working on is one. But what is the maximum number? Maximum number can be anything. Okay, the depending on the number of projects, the employee can work. This employee E one can work, work into all the projects. Okay. Same goes for E two. E two should work for at least one project. Okay, it can work even for multiple projects. Right. Suppose E four is there. E four is working for P five. Then again, this E four is there. Who is working for you know? Suppose P three, okay. So here, like we can see that P three is worked by two employees. Okay, in the project P three, there are two employees that is E two and E four. Okay, whereas this E four is working for two projects. One is that uh, P five as well as P three. Okay. Again, like we can have like E two, E two maybe uh, there can be other relationship for E two. So maybe E two is working for. You know, P four. Okay, so let me uh, write the scenario. So the scenario is, E one is working for, E one is working for, you know, P one, P two. Then E two is working for, you know, P three. E two is working for P three and P four. Then E three is working for only one, that is P four. Then E four is working for, E four is working. What we can see P five as well as P three. Okay, so this is the scenario. So from this scenario, we can just uh, directly see that every employee is working for at least one project, and every project should be associated with at least one employee. Okay, so what will be the min max scenario? Okay. What is the minimum number of relationship that the employee can take part? Okay. What is the minimum number of re relationship? What is that? That is one, right? Because, because the minimum number of relationship, it is stating that every employee should take part in at least one project. So the minimum number of relationship is one. Same goes for project. The minimum is one because in a project there should be at least one employee. What is the maximum? The maximum can be m m number of projects the uh, the employee can take part, and for the project there can be n employees. Suppose I am having 
I mean at total suppose I am having n employees and m projects okay so that means the employee can be associated with at most one m number of projects and project can be associated with at, at most n number of employees okay that means like all the employees are working in a particular project so that is the scenario right so uh, let's uh, try to draw the year diagram so that is you know, employee There is you know, work spot, then there is you know, project, project. So it's a, like a total participation in, from both the sides because all the employees should be taking part into at least one relationship and all the projects should be taking part into at least one thing. Okay, so that is MN. Okay, if you are uh, talking about the cardinality and for the mean max, it is like 1, comma N. Um, I mean, in other words, like uh, it should be on one comma m as I mentioned there, so it should be like and one comma m. So it doesn't matter like if you're writing m or n, because both will be treated as like infinite number of m. I mean, the number of other other entities, okay, both will be uh, think in that way. Right. So, are there any question? So here is one question that is what is the cardinality of ER? Okay, so in entity relationship model, I told that cardinality is the maximum number of relationship that uh, one entity can take part. Okay, and here for employee and project, we know that if there are M projects and if there are N employees, then one employee can take part up to M projects. Okay, one employee can take part up to M projects. So that is why. Uh, the cardinality for employee is basically n okay i mean cardinality for employee that is basically you know the maximum number of projects that is m and for the project it is n okay that is n that this number of uh, employees can take part into uh, one project okay so it is written uh, like this okay so for the i mean i mean the project the cardinality is n and the employee the cardinality is m Whereas if you go for min max, that is minimum number of uh, relationships that the employee can take part, that is one, and maximum number of relationships that is m. M is what? M is the you know number of uh, number of you know entries into the project table. Okay, project uh, entity, and uh, same goes for here. So I hope that that is a bit clear. Is there any other question? Okay. Yeah. So in this case, it is a many to many relationship, right? We can have multiple employees in a single project. We can have multiple uh, projects for a single employee. It is a many to many relationship. Right. So I think let's we can move forward. So for the next case, we have what? We have the recursive relationship. Okay, what is recursive relationship? Let me give you some hypothetical situation. Uh, one is that uh, we have the employee table, right? We have only one table, that is employee. Okay. Now in this employee table, some of the employees are actually supervisor. Some of the employees are supervisor, and some of the employees are supervisee. Okay. So the supervisor is basically supervising the supervises okay so the scenario is kind of that uh, suppose you have uh, uh, employee e1 okay so suppose uh, we have employee e1 and employee e1 is basically the supervisee i mean supervisor of employee e2 as well as employee e3 
okay once they employ e4 when they employ e4 suppose he is the supervisor of employee e1 okay so employee e1 is supervisor of e2 and e3 and e4 is supervisor of e1 so if you draw the diagram the diagram will be kind of that that e4 is the uh, topmost supervisor under him e1 is working under e1 e2 and e3 is working okay that is the that is the scenario right so let's talk about the cardinality and the participation so the scenario is that every employee every employee should have a supervisor okay every employee should have a supervisor and it is not needed that every employee is a supervisor okay all the employees are having one supervisor but it is not that every employee is a supervisor correct so the cardinality would be cardinality would be cardinality and uh, we'll be talking about the participation okay cardinality for the supervisor is that one supervisor can take part in two I mean, can be supervisor of multiple employees. One supervisor can be uh, can be into a relationship with multiple supervisors, right? So that means the cardinality of supervisor can be n. Okay. Whereas uh, every supervisor should be having at least okay. I mean, only one you know supervisor. That is one. Okay. So it means the cardinality for the supervisor will be one. Okay. Whereas for the participation, we can say that some of the supervisors are, I mean, I mean, it's not needed that all the employees are supervisor. Okay. All the employees are not supervisor. That means the participation can be zero. But for the supervising, for the supervising, what would be the participation? So for the supervising, yeah, for the supervisor also this scenario is there that there can be certain supervisor okay there can be certain supervisor uh i mean if you can say there can be a certain uh like employees who doesn't have any supervisor okay maybe like ceo you can say okay so for e4 e4 doesn't have any supervisor okay this is the scenario okay so e4 doesn't have scenario it means that uh, the participation for a supervisor it will be zero okay the minimum number of relationship okay so that is i think uh, the scenario is kind of clear let me just repeat it so the scenario is that there are certain employees who doesn't have the supervisor okay that means they are kind of the top level employees of the organization okay and there are also certain employees okay who are not supervisor okay so we have like e2 e3 they are not supervisor like they are these are kind of uh, one of the uh, leaf level employees of the organization okay so in this scenario the cardinality of supervisor is n because one employee can be a supervisor of multiple employees and uh, the cardinality of supervising that the maximum number of employees uh, relationship that uh, every employee can take part that is one okay because every employee can be managed by one uh, can be managed by one other employee right and the participation is both cases it is zero okay. maybe there are certain cases where the employees doesn't have any supervisor maybe there are certain cases where the employee doesn't have any supervisor okay. so in both cases that can be zero so how what will be the year diagram okay. but will it be the year diagram that is kind of that uh, we have entity that is employee we have this relationship okay now the scenario will be certainly like this okay this employee suppose it is a supervisor this side we are taking it as supervisor and this side we are taking it as super by c okay the supervisor is one side supervisor is let's say any side so in this way we can just uh, you know, draw the entity relationship model and it is kind of a recursive model that's the most uh, you know, kind of different so 
is the concept a bit clear is there uh, any question Let me just check if there are any questions or not. So, if there is no question, let me move forward. Let me move forward with a couple of more uh, you know uh, examples or you know first terminology then i'll give the example so first terminology is a weak entity so what is weak entity so uh, yeah one question i got that is uh, in that how would we identify that it's a recursive relationship so right for that you need to understand the question right for in the question it was given that everyone like whatever it is supervisor whatever it is supervising everyone is an employee right so we have basically we have only one we have only only one table okay and in that table we have certain uh, i mean for every person we will be having some supervisor okay i mean not for every person there can be null values also like for e4 for e4 we don't have any supervisor right so there should be one supervisor field so like for every employee there should can may or may not be certain supervisor or not okay so kind of that there is only one entity okay there is only one entity and and in that entity only we have like a, a relationship within itself okay so that is why it is called the a recursive relationship that the entity is somehow related to itself okay uh, like here uh, let's take the example of e1 so at one point we are seeing that e1 is supervising whereas the supervisor of e1 is e4 and in the second point we are seeing that e1 is the supervisor where, where the supervisees are e2 and e3 okay so that's the basic part i hope that uh, your question is a bit clear so that's fine let's move forward okay so we have weak entity strong entity identifying relationships okay so what is weak entity the entity that doesn't carry any key attribute okay so for that we need to understand what is key attribute so for every employee okay uh, suppose suppose person okay so suppose for person this name attribute or the age attribute this cannot be the you know key attribute why because there can be persons with same name there can be persons with same age okay but for a unique number suppose a ssn number for a specific person or you know for india it's like aadhaar number the voter number and all so these are like key attributes that we can say that yes uh, if you have a like person table then this key attribute okay or you know the the key for it it will be always unique okay so if a entity if a entity is carrying a key attribute then that entity is called the strong entity okay that entity is called the strong entity whereas if an entity is not carrying the any any key attribute, that entity is called is called the weak entity okay. let me give some example for some employee for some employee in the department we often store you know the uh, we often store the uh, you know uh, the dependent uh, uh, data for a specific employee okay so the scenario is that a employee a employee can have multiple entities i mean multiple attributes the attributes are like name first of all the unique attribute that is employee id okay employee id that is the unique attribute then we can have name age suppose salary okay well multiple things so it is called the strong entity why strong entity because it is having a unique attribute okay that is employee id whereas for dependent whereas for dependent of that employee what will be the scenario the scenario will be kind of this employee id is having the department uh, dependent d1 the same employee id can have multiple dependents right so like employee id1 employee id1 is again having another dependent employee id2 
then again another employee id that is having dependent uh, one dependent employee id two again may have some another dependent kind of that so overall you can see that uh, if you are considering both of them then that will be unique that employee and dependent if you are taking both of them then that will be unique but if you are considering only employee or only dependent then none of the attributes like employee id or the dependent none of the things are unique okay we cannot assign that okay this is the key attribute we cannot assign that right so for that reason this dependent is basically a weak entity weak entity whereas this employee is you know strong entity okay. strong entity and we will have the identifying relationship what is identifying relationship it is the relationship by which we uh, connect one weak entity to the strong entities okay so strong entity i already show you it is typically represented by a rectangle okay whereas the weak entity is represented as two rectangles okay this is a weak entity okay now we can have relationship and the identifying relationship will be like a concentric rhombuses okay we can use two two rhombuses one into another okay and always remember that this uh, identified relationship participate totally okay. i mean every every one into the dependent table should be associated with at least one employee okay so one one employee may or may not have uh, one employee may or may not have a dependent whereas one dependent uh, i mean dependent should have at least one employee uh, in the organization right so this is what uh, this is called the strong entity strong entity this is called the weak entity and this is called the identify relationship and yes it is one to many relationship that one employee can be for uh, multiple dependents right that's the thing. so yeah this is pretty about the uh, weak entity strong entity and relation and identify relationship now in the last uh, last uh, theory part we'll be looking into certain uh, you know structures okay how they look like so first of all start with attribute okay so the scenario is that we have entity okay and we can have attributes like name age okay these are not circles like these are kind of uh, address kind of okay we'll represent this as that okay so attribute is typically represented using this okay then multi-valued attribute is so for multi-valued attribute, we will typically represent this using like two concentric circles. Okay, this is multi-valued attribute. Then entity, I told you that entity is kind of a rectangle. Okay. Then key attribute. For the key attribute, in this shape, the oval shape, we use the you know a specific underline. Okay. So by underlining the name of the attribute, we represent that this is the key attribute. Then goes for composite attribute. So for composite attribute, suppose we have name, and the name is again divided into first name, last name. Okay, again suppose middle name, kind of that. So in this way, we can represent the composite attribute. Then we are uh, represented uh, entity. Then the weak entity is like double letter. Then relationship in the for the normal relationship it is numbers. Okay. For the identifying relationship, which is like for the weak entity, that we have seen that there are two numbers. One into n. Okay. Now comes the total participation. It is simply I mean uh, it's like uh, if uh, entity one uh, is like It's kind of a total participation where E2 is totally participating into the relationship. Okay, so it is R, it is E2, it is E1. Okay, so E2 is totally participating into the relationship part. 
and for the cardinality ratio it is kind of uh, it's just written like that e1 so means there are two entities e1 and e2 it's like one to n okay so these are the different you know representations that uh, uh, typically people use for representing the that uh, entity relationship diagram okay so we are almost at the end of uh, you know the theory part and then after that we have to get questions and we'll be solving them and uh, yeah meanwhile we will do check out the get crash course that is live into our geeks for geeks uh, website but this gate crash course is i mean fully free and uh, it is it will help you in in whatever stage you are in your preparation whether you are just starting with your preparation or you are at the very uh, beginning of your revision of the journey okay so in whatever case you can just do check out in the gigs for gigs um, website where for every uh, i mean for every session you will have a contest okay you will have a contest in which you will be given with 10 questions so the contest will be live while the session is going on so you can do check out into the geeks for geeks uh, website the link is I think, pinned into the chat box also okay. so yeah just do check out and if you have any questions regarding this session just put it into the live chat we'll be happy we'll be happy to answer them So I don't see any question. Let's uh, move forward with our get a previous year question. So firstly, let's discuss about this example where uh, if we can see we have three entities. We have we have the entity M, we have entity P, we have entity N. Where this M and N are basically totally participating, and N is kind of a weak entity. Okay, and here we have P. Okay, P. Uh, we have B which is having like kind of single participation and the attributes that are associated with M are M1, M2, M3 where M1 is kind of you know the primary key where for P the P1 is the primary key and for uh, this N we have N1 and N2 none of them are basically I mean this is kind of a weak weak entity where we don't have any kind of primary key or unique values okay so we need to make the we, I mean we need to know the number of tables that needed to represent this uh, entity relationship diagram okay so number of table means uh, the tables in the traditional model okay. so basically uh, i mean for this case for every entity remember for every entity we need one one uh, tables okay for every entity depending on that whether that entity is uh, like if you are having one one to one relationship okay I mean, if we are having certain like only okay, one employee will be working in one department. So if if this is true for um, I mean throughout the uh, table or throughout the data set, then we can basically merge them. But whenever the scenario will come that we are having a kind of one to many or many to one, okay, or maybe many to many. Okay. So in these cases, we uh, need to have different different tables. Okay. So for one to many, we have one table here. But again, many to have, we will have one table here, one table here. But for many to many, we will be having one table for this entity, one table for this entity, and again one table to join these two tables. Okay. So for many to many scenario, we will be having three three different tables. Right. Now for this scenario, we don't have anything for the many to many. Okay. So this is kind of many to one. Okay. This is kind of one to, I mean, this is kind of again one to many. Okay. So we will be having at most how many tables? Three tables, right? For this M and P. Is my voice a bit clear now? I will hold the mic. So, yeah. So for uh, like this M, P, N, we will be having one one table. And we can see that uh, M to P, M. To P, this is like many to one relationship, 
so for that we will be having one table okay that is representing n i mean for like it it, it is kind of one to many right so for m there will be one table here will be one table for p there will be one table and again we have p and n so it is again kind of many to one relationship okay so p i, I mean p to n this is again kind of many to one relationship hence it is again it will have one table here okay and for p there is already a table okay so in total we will be having three tables we'll be discussing more about the relational model in the maybe subsequent class so there we'll be discussing about multiple examples where like we'll be converting the er diagram to a relational table or relational model and these examples will come up to that part but for the basic, basic understanding level i think it's clear that how we are kind of joining the different entities. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, for this question. The answer, correct answer, will be three, and we need the minimum number of tables of three. Let's move forward with the next question. So in the next question, it is telling us to find the incorrect, uh, incorrect, uh, you know, a statement. For the first statement, it is telling that an attribute of an entity can have more than one value. So for the entity relationship diagram, they are telling whether we can we support multi-valued attributes or not. Okay, so we support multi-valued attributes, right? We have a specific design for a multi-valued attribute, specific design to represent it, right? So A is true. Again, the question, uh, the statement two is telling that in attribute of entity uh, can be composite or not. So we know that is it can be composite, right? Name, then first name, second name. I mean. First name, middle name, last name. So two is also B is also correct. Then let's see C. So C it is telling that in a row of a relational table, an attribute can have more than one value. Okay. So it is the I mean constraint of the relational table. For the relational model, basically, we don't support multi-valued attributes. Okay. For the relational model, we don't support multi-valued attributes. So C is not correct. Okay, it is stating that in a specific group, can we have more than one value? No, we should have exactly one value or maybe null value. Okay. So in the uh, option D, it is correctly saying that an attribute can have exactly one value or null value. Okay, that is correct. Okay, so C is not correct because in a relational model, we don't support multiple values. Okay, yeah, so C is false. So the uh, incorrect statement that they are looking for, that is the statement. So typically we are at the very end of our today's lecture. I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Okay. So if there are any question, any question regarding the session or something, I uh, I'm happy to discuss about it. Otherwise, I'll close the session. Okay. So. Any question guys? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope you guys are having a good day. Just uh, it's a bit uh, one or two months are there. So prepare well for your gate. Okay. Put the consistency over there. Prepare every day. Okay. Thank you for joining in. I see you guys into the next session. Thank you everyone.